Yeah, hello. How are we today? How are we on this fine, beautiful Monday morning here in Jacksonville, Florida? So, I know some of you might think it's a bit chilly out, but hey, you know what? I, I'm from New York. I love the North. I love the cold weather. It's fabulous for me. You know, I was looking at my few posts that I've been putting out there last week and, you know, trying this whole new video uh, experimentation thing. And I was looking at, you know, what a fun way to stay in communication with you guys, to have fun, to still be Mr. Flint and still drive content the way I always have and the way I've always done it. And today I thought I'd do something a little bit different. You know, I've told you all throughout the year, I love art. I do. I do. I love art absolutely 100%. Some of the best art in the United States. You can find it in the National Gallery in D.C. You can find it here in uh, the MoCA. All right. You can find it in the Comer, uh, the Art Museum. All right. You can find art anywhere you want. But the art I'm looking specifically at today is the art of Manifest Destiny. How can Manifest Destiny be art? I'm glad you asked that question. There's a painting out there done by John Gast in 1872 that's entitled, it's, many history teachers will teach it as the Manifest Destiny painting. If you have my class and you've been in my classroom, you know I have that poster of that painting in my classroom. And when you look at what is the definition of Manifest Destiny, all right, it is a belief or doctrine chi uh, held chiefly in the middle and latter part of the 19th century that it was the destiny of the United States to expand its territory over the whole of North America and to extend and enhance its political, social, and economic influences. That's a mouthful. That's the technical definition of manifest destiny. It's westward expansion, you know? And you see a painting in front of you right now that literally is the personification of manifest destiny. Uh oh, I used a literary term. I'm sure all the ELA teachers will be happy I did that. All right, this painting, it moves you when you look at it. You know, you can see the energy, you can see the spirituality that goes in with it. And there's all there, you know, with the good, there's also the bad as well. Yes, the painting was done in 1872, but what you have to understand is that what the way the country was in 1872. So you start off with the with the painting, all right? You start off on the right. The right is all enlightenment. The right is, is technology. It's uh, you see the cities in the you know the in the background. It almost looks like New York City, for example. And then you see the rail, the tr the trains and the rail lines coming across. And next to them, you see technology. You see communications. What I'm doing with you right now. You see the telegraph lines. Believe it or not, did you know that in 1848, it, you can send a uh, Morse code message in the same time it takes to send a text message today. Travel with telegraph lines. All right, amazing stuff that you could transmit messages like that. All right, and as you move across the painting, you see a woman floating across. She almost looks like an angel, but she's not. All right, her name is Columbia. All right, she is the figure, uh, the female kind of figure uh, representation of the United States at the time. Okay, she is leading these settlers, these pioneers across the West, the Western farmers that went out there, the homesteaders, the Homestead Act in 1863, you know, that you have all the, you know, for 150, you know, you get 150 acres of land for a $10 filing fee, you know, you got to stay there five years. You, you guys all know this. And many, much of the Western lands were settled under the Homestead Act. And you can see all of that here in this painting. You look down to the bottom right, you see ranchers, you see farmers, you see cattlemen. You're going to get like things like the Chisholm Trail. You're going to get the long drives, the idea of the cowboy. All right. What an amazing, um, unique American identity that we have. The image of the cowboy. Go anywhere in the world. Mention the cowboy. What's the first going to say? Clint Eastwood. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I love Clint Eastwood Western films. Good, bad, not a great movie. Not taking anything away, but also John Wayne, the Duke. I mean, but when you really think about the old West, you think about the gunslingers, you think about, you know, the, you know, uh, the okay corral, you know, the, the, the gun battles in the streets, you know, the outlaws, you know, uh, Jesse James, you know, James Younger gang, you got, you know, you got Wild Bill Hickok, you got Sheriff Pat Gary, you know, you got Wyatt Earp. I mean, where else can you invent a guy? You can't invent a guy like Wyatt Earp. He's found specifically here in the United States. As she's moving across the plains, all right, going from that right side to that left side, there is a dark shadowy side to this painting. There is evil to it, okay? Now, this painting is perceived by the people of the U.S. at the time as being a very positive, uplifting piece, but you have to see it's a very one-sided view of the argument, okay? The Native Americans in the painting don't exactly share our ideology for westward expansion. We came through... We broke every treaty we made with them. We promised, them, hey, we will give you this, this, and this if you let us come through your land and we let it take. No, they called it bad paper. You know, they 
we immediately broke every agreement we ever made with them. So it's no wonder they never trusted us. And when you look at the painting, they are running in fear of their lives. I mean, but as you see, as she's going across, she's bringing all this enlightenment, technology and all this. We assume the Native Americans wanted this. And if you look at the book that's in her hand, it says school book. We're going to bring enlightenment education. The native peoples didn't need this because they already had their own version of it. And the only reason we sat there and, you know, imposed our religion and theology on them is because we assumed they didn't have any, which of course they did. You know, if we'd stopped and learned just a little bit more from the native Americans, eh, you know, who knows what society would be like today. But as you can see, they are running in fear of their lives. You know, as they were being pushed off the planes, they were seen as, you know, something to be removed, an obstacle. They were seen because we didn't really understand them. It was very threatening and scary, you know, for the people of the U.S. as they came across them. We even created the Carlisle Indian Academy. We tried to westernize these people. We put them in suits. We did this. We did that. There's a, you know, there's a great photograph, before and after photograph, of a Navajo male. Uh, you look up the name Tom Torlino, and you will see this individual. What he was is a proud Navajo American Indian. Uh, it's before his intake picture into Carlisle in Pennsylvania, and then you see his after photo in a, you know, triple-breasted suit, you know, haircut, all that doesn't look like the same person but it is and that's what we wanted to do to them we want to westernize and assimilate them into our society a lot of stuff i know this minute the video is running a little long but i wanted to go a little bit more about the painter john gast who lived most of his life in brooklyn new york a, a new yorker painted this a guy that probably never spent any time out in the midwest painted this okay and this painting also is going to influence many other uh, prominent historians as well. Frederick Jackson Turner is going to write a thesis called his Frontier Thesis. In this document, he talks about the new American identity that is forged out of the pioneer spirit. All right, you look at this, you know, guys like Davy Crockett, you know, Daniel Boone, you know, they're forging their way out west. And Turner believed that the westward expansion forged this new American identity that you cannot find anywhere else in the world, all from this one painting. It's amazing. I, I could I could talk for hours, uh, literally hours on end uh, about this. And it, students who have my class, they know I, I love this painting. But I wanted to share it with you and just share the beauty of art with you guys today. Each, maybe a couple times a week, I'm going to come on here and express different ideas and different things that I want you to understand. And I really, really hope that you guys are staying safe, social distancing yourselves, and just do, dealing with it the best way you can. Look at me. I, I you know, it's it's a work day. I'm in a suit and tie every day. You know, it's the it's the little things in life to help keep you, you know, regimented through the week. You know, I don't have to be in a you know shirt and tie for work, but I really enjoy doing these videos and you know being out here for you guys. And I hope y'all enjoy your week. And I will hope to see you guys soon. This has been another Mr. Flint moment in history.